Welcome to Modern Musings, Conversations with the Maiden, Mother, and Crone. Looking at ourselves and the world through the lens of the 21st century. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Kristen here, your hostess today, with my co-hosts, Cindy Murray and Amber Garvin. Hello. And today we're talking about one of my favorite things in the world, list making. (laughs) I'm a nerd for it. I'm a little obsessed with it. It's something that I do every day. And I didn't realize it was something that I did every day until probably when I was sitting in an office job and sometimes I would be like on my break or something and I just had to like expel thoughts from my mind that weren't related to work and I started making lists because I would be trying to work on something and thoughts of home or private life would pop in my head and I would just have to like put them (laughs) on a list or something like I was writing them down so that I could think about them later I always think about things at the wrong time yeah and that was my way of saying hey thanks for that thought I'm pausing that thought for now you know I'm putting a pin in it for later kind of thing and it became like this list thing. And I actually, I may have been doing that before uh, the workplace, you know, office environment. Subconsciously. I think actually I started when I got my first APN and I discovered that I liked making lists of things that I was interested Tell in. Tell people what an APN is. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So but, I'll yeah. get to that. So, <laughs> But I, I was just, uh, you know, nerding out about why I like lists and where where it stems from. But um, so today we're going to be talking about um, different types of lists, why you make lists, um, things to think about for making a list, things you might have never thought like, ooh, that would be fun to make a list about. And why why do I say it's fun? Like it sounds like it's something mundane, like, oh, I'm making a grocery list. And there's other different types of lists that uh, you might enjoy making. Oh, yeah. And that's yeah, why I like to do it. lists. Yeah. Lists Mine are, are mostly, like, fun lists and, uh, like, bucket lists, stuff like that. So I mm. enjoy, like, the act of, like, pulling those thoughts out of my head and putting them onto paper. So I wanted to talk about different types of lists, um, more of, like, the useful lists, and then the fun list also and then like um what good they can do in your life um Mm -hmm. and different places where you can put them so um i guess we could probably start with um one of the reasons i wanted to talk about this subject was because uh, a couple of podcasts back we were talking about our current projects Mm -hmm. and um we had all mentioned that we used like our little notebooks or our journals Mm -hmm. or even like our bullet journals to create lists and that was something that all three of us do yes and we kind of went on our own little tangent about making lists i think all yeah. three of us mentioned something about making lists <laughs> yeah, and that was did, our current we project We're geeky. <laughs> yeah and so i thought you know we should probably just go into more detail about that because it's something that we all enjoy doing thoroughly so um when I was first thinking about it, I was like, oh, gosh, what kind of lists, are, uh, you know, do we make? And <laughs> I was like, uh, oh, packing lists. And uh, mom was like, oh, yeah, grocery lists. And I was like, no, those aren't fun lists. Like, I'm talking about, like, fun lists. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, tell me one of the lists that you make that might be the most oddball list that you have. Oddball list? Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, I have a list of our board games. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, and I, this comes back to our board game or our gaming episode, yeah. sort of, but one of my cleaning projects, um, earlier in the year was to reorganize the family game closet. And, um, I may have to post a picture of that if I haven't <laughs> already, because we had this huge game closet full of games and, uh, my husband and I, Mark, um, we decided to call it and kind of eliminate some games And then I went through and inventoried all of the games we had and made a list of them in order by how many players could play them. Because Mm -hmm. we we have family game nights and we're always going, well, what can we play that will let six players? Or what do we have that seven players can play? And so I actually made a list of the board games and a list of card games dice games and tiles and things like that separate from the board games and um and each one it starts with the games that only allow two players all the way up to infinity 
And so that's one of my oddball lists, but it has come in really, really handy. Yeah, we just used yeah. it recently. Yes, yes. Yeah. So it's it's in my bullet journal. So I use my bullet journal to keep all those fun little lists. And mm-hmm. that's one of the things I like to do with it. So fun. Yeah. Um. Well, I don't know if this is oddball. Well, I'm very OCD, as we've talked as we about all before. Are. Yeah, yeah, like um, and I've been making lists my whole life ever since I can remember as a kid I would list things uh one thing that I always am constantly adding to current listing and I actually have an app on my phone called LibIB but I keep in alphabetical order a um I have different lists of the books that I own Oh, yeah. Oh, on, I, I started on, one of those as well. Yeah, on LibIB. It's an app on my phone, and it's like my home library. And I have a list on here of the different lists. Like, I have all my books categorized. I have young adult books in alphabetical order. And, well, one thing I do like about that list is that it puts things in alphabetical order by oh, author. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. But by author, not like by book. But um, I have all of my romance novels, or I keep, I keep them like categorized as small paperbacks. Oh, and then mm-hmm. I have young adult, and then I have adult, and then I have like a reference books because I'm a huge nerd and I have a dictionary collection and I have a lot of reference books. And there's also an option that you can add DVDs and such like that on there. But I have not done that with my DVDs. But I have... Um, oh, that's really cool. We're actually going to condense all of our DVDs into like the little zipper book. Thing. That's what uh-huh. I did take them when out of the I case. moved. Yeah, that's, and my biggest have... fear was, how am I going to know what all my DVDs are? But oh, adding them to yeah. a... Does yeah. it barcode yeah. scan? Yeah, it barcode scans, yes. And, you know, I even, I have books that are, like, so old that they don't have a barcode that I have to, uh, yeah, so that I have to manually enter. But it has been nice because, so, for the longest time, I lived, you know, from place to place, and a lot of my books were in storage or in boxes or whatever, and I still have books in storage in boxes. But I have gone, before I moved last, I went through and I scanned or entered every single book that I owned. So that way, if I go and buy books, you can check. I sure can you check it. to make, you can search Ooh. on there and you can check to make sure that you have it. Because for a while there, for a few years when I had all my books boxed up, and I would go to the bookstore and buy more books. I had ended up with a ton of duplicate I've books. I've done that too. I had. Yeah. <laughs> I recently cleaned out my bookshelf and I found three copies of James Clavell's Shogun. And I'm like, <laughs> how many do I need? You know. Yeah. But um, I actually well, have a similar. I use. I a, have a Pride and Prejudice book uh, collection, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, I have a another app that I use called Library Thing, mm-hmm. and it also tracks my books. Yeah, in my I library. like Library Thing, but there's a limit to is, uh, the yes. amount of books that you can put on, and Libib has not cut me off so oh, far. Oh, that's good. And you have that's a lot of books. Know. That's good yeah. to know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So one of my lists uh, that I have been really like building on lately, uh, as you may or may not know, I've been building this home binder, which is kind of like a reference material for my household. And it has, you know, like our cleaning checklist and other Mm -hmm. resource materials. That way, if something happens to me, my husband can figure out how to pay all the bills or, you know, vice versa, reach my doctor if he needs to call my doctor, things like that. So one of the categories that we have in there is um, the kitchen. Basically, it has its own uh, section, uh, anything that goes in, goes on in the kitchen, right? So Mm -hmm. um, we started, you know, we do a lot of meal planning. And I thought, you know, it would be nice to have a list of like our go to meals and by meals, um, what I started, yeah, we did <laughs> yes, kind of yes, have talked to that. And talk the cleaning that. checklist, right. another like right. back, 
Yeah, and I've been just kind of like building on this binder all along. Oh, yeah. So it's been really helpful for me to like also speak yeah. about it and blog about it too. Yeah, you've blogged <laughs> about the binder mm-hmm. at least once, yes. Oh, yeah. So I've been just constantly building. It was one of my Cultivate What Matters um, goals this year was to build the binder. And so one of the inserts in the binder is dinner entrees and then dinner sides. Mm. And so um, when we have a recipe that, you know, because we've been exploring different recipes for the past couple of years and we find one that we really like or that we want to continue to revisit I've been adding those to the list and so whenever I do my meal planning on Sundays now I've been going through that list and mostly picking stuff from that list and then oh yeah that way I'm not going out and like You're reinventing, not reinventing a new the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> menu every week yeah um and just throwing all these brand new recipes at my husband so because he does most of the cooking so I usually try to make it easy for him and uh provide him recipes or meal plans of things that he's already cooked before so we've been kind of going back to those ones on the list and I kind of sorted my list before it was just like a long list of different Mm -hmm. entrees and then I uh, broke them down into different like genres so there's an Italian section and a Tex-Mex and um, we have the steakhouse section now and then we have one for burgers and sandwiches and because um, you know most people might not need like a recipe for a hamburger but um, with my husband he's very literal when he cooks so I just give him a menu and I'm like ooh or a recipe and if it's like you know a cheddar bacon burger if that sounds good then that's what we're having you know and he makes it exactly like the recipe says so I'm kind of lucky like that I'm like ooh, this looks good I'm gonna <laughs> give this to my husband I've given him all kinds of recipes and he makes the them like a of having a beginner cook yeah yeah but I mean he's he's because he's he follows a very good cook he then, follows yeah. the direction so literally that I can give him just about any recipe and he manages to make it pretty spot on um but uh, yeah, it's it's been really uh, very helpful because it makes meal planning go a lot faster. Um, and just having like the list, even some of the things on, on there don't have a recipe. Um, they're things that just I know how to make because uh, I think I've mentioned before, I don't generally cook with a recipe. I just cook from the top of my head and I know how to make lemon pepper chicken. I don't need a recipe for it. I just make it. Um, and so like I have those things on there so that I don't forget to make them because it's been like a year since well, I made that. And that's your, your list kind of stems from a list that I have. Um, I actually have a list of all of our family kind of go to meals Yeah, and it, and it, I've had it for years and years and years. And I just, I got tired of trying to think, what can we have this week? What can we have this week? Mm-hmm. And so I made a just I hand wrote a list of all the things that I knew how to make, you know, or that I had recipes for or that I that my family likes or whatever. And and it was like a two page handwritten list mm-hmm. of of stuff that I would make every once in a while or whatever. I think it was three columns on two pages. And um and I just listed off everything from hamburgers to hot dogs to tuna casserole to spaghetti to chicken spaghetti. You know, and I just just kind of brainstormed everything I could think of. And I just put that away in a book or in a file or whatever and use that for the, I I still use that. I add stuff to it from time to time. And I, it just helps me because if I'm stumped on what to make this week, I can look through there and go, Oh, I haven't made that in a while. Exactly. Yeah. Because sometimes you just, you get stuck in a rut and make the same old things because you can't, think of something else and it takes away that that's me I do that all the time (laughs) I get I get decision fatigue um Mm -hmm. and it which is a real thing and you if you have to make a lot of decisions all the time especially at work or whatever and you uh, if there's too (laughs) many options then sometimes you you can't make a choice and so having a list and I can just run my finger down that list until something says bingo Right. And then that's, that's exactly what, I, what I do. I make sure because we eat a variety of meats. We have, you know, fish at least once. We have beef at least once. We have chicken at least once. Uh, yeah, pork I do the at same least thing. once. Yeah. And then, you know, sometimes we'll have like two or three chicken, mm-hmm. you know. And then um, I go down the list and we'll never eat 
Italian twice and we'll never yep, have Tex Mex twice. We'll never exactly have Asian food twice. Yeah. But we literally will have, you know, in an American assortment of cuisines, we'll have like all of the, you know, typical American things Tuesday, taco night, fish Friday, and, you know. Yeah, I do, I do the same thing. I do. I'll look and I'll, I'll, if I'm waiting for a meal, I'll go, oh, yeah, I don't have a fish yet. Let's pick one. Yeah, and then I pick from the category, or I go, oh, wow, we haven't had any Italian food on the menu this week, and I need chicken. So I'll look at the things All that the are chicken, Italian, Italian and recipes. what's chicken. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just, Amber's like, you guys are so weird. Yeah. I just eat whatever's in my fridge. I know. I'm just laughing because... I've had tacos like three times this week and <laughs> salad like twice this week. And, yeah. it, and it's like, it, it, I now go between not... tacos, salad, and stir fry. We are not talking about <laughs> leftovers. We're not talking about making things out of No, I'm like, so, I'm yeah, just, I'm yeah. like talking about but, like, yeah. uh, I've got two different kinds of taco meat in my fridge. I've got <laughs> low carb tacos. And I, since I'm like, okay, I'm going to buy low carb low carb tacos so i'm gonna make all these different tacos this week and yeah. next week and, it's and gonna it is, be something and else. when you when you live by yourself <laughs> you kind of have to do that and do. i remember yeah. those days Dude, when i live by myself when jason I just, and i are together we usually go out and eat and go on a date you know what i mean because yeah. yeah during the school year i see him like twice a week cooking you know yeah. for one person or two people is completely different than cooking for a family right and once i had <laughs> More yeah. more than myself to worry about, you know, when I had a roommate, we were oftentimes like eating at different times. So I never really was too worried about when I live with my best friend, Crystal, I never worried about, you know, like feeding her because she worked in a restaurant and we had different hours. Mm -hmm. So if I had leftovers, she would eat them, um, you know, but having a husband and child now, it's like, oh my gosh, I have to like make sure they get fed and have variety too because um you the know otherwise health issue yeah otherwise we will eat the same thing over and over again we'll have fish sticks one night and mini corn dogs the next night and uh, you know, I don't, i'm not and, that basic i'll at least right, right. Well, but, but you're not meat. you're not a 12 year or 11 <laughs> yeah, year old yeah and a, and a single and dad having you know, to that, cook every single right. day well, yeah 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 and yeah, that's why I have the list. <laughs> and, and, you know, bachelor dads or widow dads with, with 11-year-old daughters or 10-year-old daughters or 9-year-old daughters tend mm. to cook fish sticks and corn dogs. And, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, and, and they that's what they yeah. eat. And they're, there's like, where's the vegetables? Right. Where's yeah. your nutritious When, when they first moved in with me, I felt tapped out like after a week. I was like, oh, my gosh, I need to sit down and like think about what I can cook because I already felt like I was running out of ideas. That's how I was when I first, when I moved in with my mom and grandma and started cooking for them, I had to start hitting up Pinterest and right. pinning things on Pinterest that I could make for an right. older woman, not too spicy. And then, yeah. you know, my mom who loved spicy. So, I mean, I'm kind of miss that living, you know, my mom's no longer living and my grandma's in um, a retirement community. So I kind of miss like making those big meals for my dad, my mom and my grandma, because mm -hmm. it allowed for like the creativity and my grandma let me buy whatever I wanted to at the grocery store. So I would make things like French onion soup. I would make different kinds of casseroles. Mm -hmm. I would make different kinds of things that they like to eat and, my grandma would sometimes call it fancy food because I would get a recipe from Pinterest and try it out on them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it, after you do that, like day in and day out and day in and day out, you, you just wind up, like I said, having decision fatigue and it's just like, yeah, I don't want to think about food. I just, I just want to go to a list and go, okay, I can do that. Yeah. That works. And and I do that with a lot of things besides food, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, anything that I have to make decisions about, I put – uh, well, another food thing. I have a list on my phone of neighborhood restaurants so that if we're sitting here and I can't think about what I want for dinner, I can go through the list and look for a restaurant that sounds okay. You know, because sometimes if I get too hungry, I'm so hungry I can't 
think about what I want. I'm no longer mm-hmm. at the point of, I'm I'm hangry or whatever, you know. Oh so, yeah, I get that way too. So I can't my my brain doesn't want to think anymore and so it's like, okay, I just need to find something, you know, on this list or I also made a list of uh, when Ashley was staying with us a lot, you know, she goes back and forth to college and, um, she, she is kind of picky about what she likes to eat. And so I, t- I tend to let her choose where we go eat for lunch. And, um, so I would, you know, I, there's some things that I like to eat that she doesn't like to eat. So I started making a list of places she doesn't like so that when she goes back to school. And what is the name of that list called again? (laughs) Food I can eat with Ashley's not here. That is the actual literal name of the list. (laughs) I know we pulled that up earlier today. Yes, we did. We went to lunch and it was like, well, where do you want to go to lunch? And it was like, well, let's go somewhere that Ashley wouldn't like to go to because she's not here. (laughs) Poor Ashley. (laughs) But I mean, I have like that same problem with Jason because... There are a lot of things that he won't. My exactly. husband I have has certain places. Ha, my husband places. has places that he goes when I'm not here. So I am like really picky about. I don't like. Um, I don't like all Vietnamese food. I love um, bun. I think is how you say it, which is the vermicelli mm. noodle soup or not soup vermicelli noodle. The, the cold almost. The, yeah, like they're kind of cold. room temperature cold or whatever with the grilled pork on top. Um, to me, that is a summer dish. I'm not a fan of pho, uh, which is kind of weird because I like a lot of Asian food, but I'm not a huge fan of pho. Mm, I miss noodles. My husband loves pho, and he always wants to go eat pho in the wintertime. But to me, the the, new, the vermicelli noodles are a cold weather. Or, I mean, are, they're a summer. hot weather. They're right. a summer dish. And so I don't want to go there in the wintertime ever. So he has a list of places that I don't like to eat at. Long John Silver's, Vietnamese, you know. Couple, um, <laughs> Long John Silver's. Yes, Long Well, okay. <laughs> so the thing with Long John Silver's is that when I was pregnant with Kristen, <laughs> uh, we went shopping, we went grocery shopping, and there was a Long John Silver's in the parking lot. I, I actually love Long John Silver's, but the smell of it makes me nauseous. So I, when I was pregnant with her, I was probably about seven months pregnant with her. I had morning sickness the whole time and I, some smells just killed me. And we went grocery shopping and this one particular Long John Silver's was really bad about not cleaning their grease. So it had that stale burnt Ooh. grease smell on it top the of the smelliest fish. Long John Silver's. It's literally, you could smell it from a mile from away. outside. I outside. used to tell my grandma, can we go over there just to smell the Long John Silver's when I was a little kid? Oh. <laughs> so it was, I, it's in the parking lot at the front of where this grocery store and a Walmart are. Okay. Right. So it's like not even close to the grocery store, but we pulled up into the grocery store, go in the grocery store. And the first thing I had to do was go to the bathroom and throw up. So I have not been able to tolerate Long John Silver's ever since then because every time I smell it, that's what it makes me think of. And like I said, I love Long John Silver's, but I can't eat it anymore. So there's my Long John Silver's. Anyways, wow, we really derailed off uh, Yes, we did. Well, she <laughs> started it. I know. Oh, right? my gosh. Okay. Blame no, no. me. Yeah. Get back to the <laughs> list, lady. So anyway, no. so so my husband has a list, too. His isn't written. Mine are, mine are written. Mm-hmm. But, but <laughs> I think mental every, list. a lot of people have mental lists. Right. I, I just happen to write mine down because my list recall of those mental lists is not always that right. great. And, and especially if I'm under pressure right and this i'm really talking about like the act of writing the list the, act of, the pleasure I of do that. having the list and like the pleasure of checking cultivating the I thoughts love, into a list i love how there's there's a i um a, a i don't know if it's a class or a workshop or something it i've never done it i wanted to do it it's called listers got a list and I'm going to try to find the oh, link. Oh, you've for always that. told me to check that out. I yes. thought it was a list of lists because no. I like those too. It's, it's like a class, and she did a project thing, and it was like every day she'd say like make a list, uh, and and I think they did it like bullet journal or journal entry style, you know, mm-hmm. um, in some kind of little notebook or whatever. And so she called it Listers Got a List, and um, and they just listed everything. So it's like list your favorite smells. List mm-hmm. your favorite movies. And the whole thing is to 
enjoy the pleasure of making those lists. Mm -hmm. And I just think that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I like those. I uh, made a list on my phone. I have, like, lists in paper. I, I was going to talk about different places to list, too, but it sounds like we'll probably just be talking about them throughout. But <laughs> um, in my phone, on my iPhone, I use the notes, and I have a lot of lists in there. Most, I do, too. Mostly yeah. my notes are lists. And uh, one of them was one day I was just like, Ooh, that's one of my favorite songs of all time. And then I was like, oh, I want to make all-time favorite song list. Mm. And, like, these are the songs I could listen to, like, any time. Like, Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen, right? That's, like, <laughs> I could listen to that, like, 20 times in a row. Literally I have one half. of those in my list journal, yeah. Right. So then I sat down and I wrote down my favorite songs. Then I also did one for my favorite albums because there are just some – albums that, that i you can believe listen to the yeah whole, the whole album. thing yes. every single song yeah, on it is then, like perfection so mm-hmm. i have a separate one a list of that and that was really fun when travis and i first met that was something that we kind of shared was our list oh, yeah. you know of our favorite songs and stuff like that and we enjoyed talking yeah. about that kind of stuff um and then i've started one of my favorite authors my favorite artists my favorite books um and those are all um what i've started in my bullet journal um, I just bought a bullet journal and started it probably about a year or two ago. And so it's just barely like becoming its own thing. Like most of the pages just have sticky notes on them of what, what you intend propose, to propose. Yeah, yeah. What I propose I'm going to put on that page. Um, but I just, I like, um, sometimes when I can't focus, I like to sit down and like write a list. Oh yeah. And, um, one of the things that I did, I was struggling a few years back with like a lot of things that were overwhelming me. I just felt like I had a lot of stress and, um, I did a brain dump and I just listed off every single thing that I needed to do or that was bothering me mm-hmm. that I needed to take care of or address. I see and it was, matrix. Well, no, this is even before well, I, I know, Eisenhower but, Matrix did. I just wanted to get it off oh, of my I know, chest. but what, that's yeah. what I'm saying, though, is that my, you know, here we go again. My The Eisenhower Matrix is basically my brain dump. I make that list every week. Mm-hmm. I just, I actually make a list and then I put it in the Eisenhower Matrix. Yeah. So I, I do that brain dump. Yeah. And then I go back through it. Yeah, I wrote that list. So. It was three pages long on oh, a yeah. Word document. Mine is too. And after I was done writing it, I just felt like, oh, wow, like a whole like weight was lifted off my shoulders. I just got it out of my head. Yes. Onto a piece of yes. paper. And I feel like just thinking about it, like a mental list doesn't count in my view. No, because, because if it's a mental have list. to commit it to paper. You, you keep replaying it in your head. If it's a mental list, you right. just keep replaying it over and over and over right. again once i put it on paper i don't you need to go, go back to it unless i want to yes right like yes. a good list of things that i want to mm-hmm. remember or something um and i think that sometimes um your brain doesn't even think about them until you force your brain to think about them like a gratitude list yes i think that's yes. really helpful to just start writing out things that you're grateful yes. for absolutely um, because like a bucket list for an example, you may not realize the things that you want to do or the goals until that you, you want start to have until you start yes. making yourself think about them. Because when you say, I need to sit down and write these things out, then you go, oh, I actually need to write something down. So what are those things I need to write down? What you is it that of, I want? You allow mm-hmm. yourself to think about it. Yeah. yeah. And then you commit it to paper by writing it or That's typing kind of like it. like a setting an intention, isn't Exactly. It? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, um, I, I do like doing that. And I like, um, one of my affirmations that I ran across a a few days ago or a few days, a few weeks ago was, um, was one that was talking about the gratitude list and, you know, about how you can change your mindset, um, by doing a gratitude list anytime that you are feeling down or stressed or whatever, just stop and make that list of the things that you're grateful for. And it, it just switches something inside your head. It does. It really does. And just like making that, you know, doing that brain dump of things that you're worried about or thinking about or whatever, think when you start making that list, you're, you're, it's like pulling the, Oh, Oh my gosh, I just had this thing. Um, Dumbledore 
in oh yes in the he Harry Potter movie memories. where he's pulling his memories out and putting them in the, <laughs> the little thing. So you're that's that act of making a list is that physical representation of what he was doing there, and you're just pulling it out of your head and. And you're not wanting to forget it. You want to remember it. That's why you're writing it down. But you don't want to remember it right now. Mm -hmm. You want to pull it out of there and put it in a safe place, which mm -hmm. is your list, so that you can come back to it at your leisure. Mm -hmm. And and I love, that's why I love, I have a notebook. Um, right now I'm using this really awesome rocket book that a friend, uh, Kristen's, one of her former roommates, um, Crystal, uh, gave us some rocket books. These are the most amazing technology. And I mine is full of lists. It's crazy right now. Um, they're temporary lists because this rocket book is used. Um, you use friction erasable pens in it. And you can make your list. You can scan the QR code at the bottom of the page and upload your list as a digital file. Um, it will do optical uh, character recognition and convert it into like a Word document or a notes file or a PDF yeah. or whatever whatever you set it to do. And um, I I don't even use mine to upload most of the time. I just use it as an erasable portable whiteboard with multiple pages. So, you know, there's like, what, 20, 30 pages in here? Mm -hmm. And I have different yeah, sections. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It is really cool. And I just have all these lists in here. And I use it until I'm done with it. And then I can just erase it and go on and do, you know, a wet rag and wipe it off and it's gone. And, um, but I love being able to carry that with me and keep multiple kinds of lists. In addition to the notes, my notes mm -hmm. app on mm -hmm. my computer mm -hmm. and the reminder app. Also, you can make notes like to-do lists and things like that in the reminders app. So I do all of those. And sometimes my lists are repeated in multiple places, but yeah, I use multiple apps for my lists as well. Yeah. So I totally understand that. I, and I, lists are fun. Lists are for me, they're necessary also, because like I say, I forget things, but like, you know, going back to what Kristen was talking about with the fun list, you know, like I made in my bullet journal, I made a summer bucket list. It was actually, um, inspired, um, by a crafter named Crystal Idignate. Um, and she did a summer bingo bucket list. And, um, so I, I thought it was really cute. So I made a bingo bucket list for the summer of all the activities that I wanted to do. I didn't get through all of them, but it was the act of making the list and setting that, yeah. and yeah. setting that intention of these are the things I want to do this summer. Um, or the, these are the things I think I want to do this summer. And so now we're talking about doing another one for, um, the fall, doing one for the Christmas, you know, mm -hmm. different things like that. And I love doing that. So I, I need Christmas to work on Christmas lists are fun. Like, oh, I love yeah, Christmas I have lists. multiple Christmas lists, like things I want to make, gifts I want to buy and, um, yeah, I find Christmas myself movies I want to watch. Making a lot more lists when it comes closer around the holidays and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, I did kind of a summer bucket list also when I went on vacation. Like, I made a list of things that I wanted to do while on vacation. Oh, uh -huh. So, yeah. Well, and we talked about that, too, about um, before Kristen went on her New Orleans trip. We were talking about um, making lists about... Um, when I went to New Orleans, I made a list of all the food that I wanted to go eat. You know, I, mm -hmm. I want to eat etouffee while I'm there, and I want to eat beignets while I'm there. I actually <laughs> uh, created, before our trip, I created a, not a scavenger hunt, but oh, yes. um, like a photo op list yes. of crazy fun things. Because it's a family trip, I've and we hadn't well. been on a family trip since before we got married. Um, so, like... I have some examples where we did a picture of someone sleeping, a picture of someone trying something new, a picture of someone wearing a hat. Oh, yeah. You know, because opportunities to wear hats. Well, and, we, you know, this kind of goes... I didn't even think about that. Yeah. This kind of goes back to the, um, you know, we're getting close to December daily season. Mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> And so I usually start making lists of 
pages that I want to put in my December daily, pictures that I want to capture for my December daily. Um, that's something I really look forward to. And it, it helps me remember to take those special pictures during the holidays because otherwise I might get busy. But it's also just fun to think about, ooh, what's all the different things I can do, you mm -hmm. know? So, and, and I might make like a list of, Drink hot cocoa, drink hot cider, um, sing a Christmas carol, kiss under the mistletoe, you know, and I'll have a whole list of different things like that. Not even necessarily for that book, but just things that make it feel like Christmas to me. Mm -hmm. So those are, those are fun things too. And, um, and like you were talking about movies or, or whatever. I like, I like lists like that too. Um, I have, I actually have a list dating my technology here. I had a Palm Pilot. That's that's a long time ago. And I kept a list of MP3s that I wanted to buy or download. And um, I've actually kept that list going as a notepad file because um, I didn't download all of them. And I know you can listen to stuff on Pandora or Apple Music or whatever, but I still like to have, um, I have some old iPods and I like to um, make playlists. Make a playlist on my iPod. So I, I have these lists of songs that I have yet to acquire. I'm glad so. you mentioned playlists because that's actually a different kind of list. Oh, yeah. I have those But two. it's also a list. I have a multitude of playlists. And I will pick, like, um, say, for instance, like a trip or something. Like whenever my friend Emily and I went to Colorado, I made a playlist for that trip mm -hmm. of just music that I felt like would go good with our trip. Um, and we, you did that before when we went on when our we trip went to, to Mazatlan. Mazatlan. Mm -hmm. I had a whole special playlist, playlist just this, for that. Yes. Yeah. And I have a lot of different, um, like sometimes I like to listen to, uh, instrumental music while I'm reading, mm -hmm. uh, or like new age kind of music. And I will like, if I'm reading a book about vampires, I'll have more like dark, music or i'll have like if i'm listening to like or if i'm reading a high fantasy book i will listen to high fantasy and celtic instrumental oh, yeah, kind of music uh -huh. while i'm reading the book because it just sets the scene like i don't know yeah and so i have different playlists um for different books that i'm reading too that yeah i have i have playlists well part of my one little word this year um one of the things that i did was make a playlist of words of songs related to my word now. Yeah. And so I mm -hmm. actually have a playlist um, of that and I listen to it regularly just to remind myself to go back to that word. So and I have all kinds of playlists. I have, you know, you know, whatever the, mood. I'm going to go make a playlist now because that's not something that I have really thought about or had the pleasure of doing in a while. Oh, yeah. I mean, I remember back when you used to burn CDs or whatever. Right. Or like See, we used I would to make have mixed like tapes a yeah. and then mix we made tape mixed and a mixed CDs, playlist whatever or whatever. Them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know... It's been a long time kids, since you've done that, huh? Yeah, like Raina, like kids today, they don't have the pleasure of being able to make a mixed tape. No, right. they make playlists on their Apple Music. Yeah, well, but yeah, it's they, not but, the but, same. But, I mean, it is not I know the it's same. Not. No, because it's not, but, you had to like work to make those like I used to sit and listen to the radio and I had a fresh uh, tape in the queue yeah. ready oh, to yes. go. Like if the, your favorite song. And came if my on. favorite song came on, I ran and I like hit record oh, yes. so that it would be like. I would do and that would with so MTV videos also, <laughs> like yes, MTV videos. I had the like I would VHS sit there of with my like, favorite videos. Yes, <laughs> I would sit there. Yeah, in front w during video hour or whatever they did on MTV, I would sit in front of the TV in front of the VCR so I could re yeah record my favorite <laughs> ones. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, that's yeah. that's actually kind of fun. I never really thought about that, but th those would be considered a list in a sense. In a sense, yeah, yeah. 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 So Fun. yeah, I I like lists. I, you know, like as the, um, like the listers got a list girl. You know, like I said, they list a lot of fun things too. And there's a there's another girl um who does something similar. Um, her her name is uh Lael 
con car. And um, she started out during COVID um, doing these little um, list with me live things on Saturday. It was just, it just started out as a, a little short thing to um, entertain people on, I think, was it YouTube? I think, I don't, I can't remember where she did it on. I think it was YouTube. Uh, I'll, I will link that in the, in the, on the blog. But um, she would do these little, like, one-hour things or whatever where she would um, show how to decorate, like, a little traveler's notebook and make lists. And then um, and it was live. She'd have um, live chat going on uh, with people, and um, and people would – she'd, like – I'm trying to think one of her lists uh, – old, old TV shows that we loved – or old game shows or whatever. And those, so then people would name them off and she'd go, oh, yes. And then she'd put them on her list. Right. It's fun. I like it because in that sense you can write about all your favorite things without having to write a paragraph about why. You can well, just put them on the list. And it's and it's kind of a, uh, in a sense, it's a way of scrapbooking oh, your yeah. life because you're, you're making a journal entry about, something that has been part of your life your memoir so and lists. so if you're talking about um favorite childhood game shows you know you don't really have to explain all you have to do is put a title and make the list mm -hmm. and and you That's have made something that talks about idea. who you are mm -hmm. i mean it really does yeah about, it talks about your past and um my favorite childhood games my favorite childhood toys mm -hmm. um my favorite snacks growing up. My favorite yeah. snacks. Uh, yeah. My favorite smells. My favorite smells now. My favorite mm -hmm. smells mm -hmm. 20 years ago, you know, when I was a kid or whatever. Um, you know, there, there's so many things. And um, you, you could also work through some of your shadow work that way as well. Um, things that I'm afraid of. Mm -hmm. Things that hurt me. Things that... Um, I wish I could change or People whatever. I need to forgive. Pe yes. There's so many things you can do with the list. And there, my therapist has actually given me the task of making lists of different things, you know, list off all the things that you think you would have done differently or, and, you know, and usually she uses that to illustrate that, no, you would not have done that differently. But, um, but the, but her point is that until you start thinking in those terms and you start actually writing that stuff out, um, and and the, the one specific that she gave me was to um, list out a timeline of uh, some things that happened in my life and because I kept lamenting that I didn't do blah 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 or whatever, and she said I don't think you could have and I want you, here, here's why and go home and make a list of the timeline of all the things that happened and then you come back and tell me when you would have done that and you know I sat down and did the homework and made this list this timeline which is a list mm -hmm. of things that happened in the order that they happened and sure enough when I looked at it you know I was like oh there's no way I could have done that and I really absolved myself of the guilt that by I writing felt it out. Of, by writing it out and, and seeing it. Yeah. That's why seeing I say it. writing the list, the act of writing the, the list is just cathartic. takes some kind of yes. weight off of it you is. and it makes mm. it more real. It is. It yeah. does. And you know, so, so the act of list making can be light and fluffy and fun, or it can be deep and spiritual and, um, and life changing, mm -hmm. you know, really. So um, I say life changing because some of my lists have been listing, scripting things that right. I want out of my life, um, listing positive affirmations, listing negative self talk while changing it into something positive. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many ways that you can use listing and it's fun and it's helpful. If you want to look at uh, something fun, 
Uh, I recommend that you uh, look at Wikipedia. I love Wikipedia because it's like oh, yeah. you just keep following the links and go down a rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> but one of the reasons why I always like re- Wikipedia is if I have like an author that I like, I don't have to go to the author's website to look at all the books that they wrote Oh yeah, in it's some like, stylized format. I want to go on Wikipedia because I want to see, see what order they wrote them. Use, does like right. a basic type thing. Right. So Wikipedia has one called List of lists so when you start off on wikipedia's <laughs> list of lists um it is basically um you know they use the um hierarchical uh, yeah they use like a like note taking format I, don't, I forget what it's called We're, outline like, outline thank you i like the word lost me <laughs> so um and this is great uh for listing too if you are really like breaking your list up and like really organizing something into something else um but they have the contents of list of list it's actually called list of list of lists and um (laughs) it's funny because uh the page links to other lists which link to other lists and so like the content really is a rabbit hole it has culture and the arts and then it has underneath that literature mythology philosophy and then it has arts and the arts and then it has characters fictional elements performing arts visual arts so like if i click on characters then it goes even farther then it goes like into types of yes, characters list and- of advertising characters list of characters in fictional work and then it has list of csi characters list of dc <laughs> comics and it's just oh like my gosh a list of lists list of, of lists. lists yes wow wow that's amazing so yeah if you wanted I, to i need to stay away from that <laughs> yeah <laughs> you really it's, do it's really cool it because it's uh it really just keeps breaking down it's like a fractal of lists yeah. oh and, uh, <laughs> yeah lists are a fractal in a way they really are because you can always Narrow them down and narrow them down and narrow them down. My my mind is blown, ladies, because I thought that I made a lot of lists, but mine are way more. I mean, I I have lists of, you know, like my favorite things or whatever, and I have a list journal, but you guys are taking list making to a completely different level. I do have to say (laughs) that uh, we probably inherited some of this OCD part of it because ours does go into some extremes with OCD. So my grandmother, um, was a list maniac and, um, so whenever my mom was helping Mine my was too. I always knew my grandma had no, lists. You have no idea. Yeah. Um I remembered because my grandmother collected DVDs like no one else that I knew had DVDs, but my grandma had like a buttload of DVDs because she loves movies and, and and audiobooks. Yes, and so she um you know being the OCD that she is, she had her list of DVDs and I always thought that was so cool that she had them listed and she had like the neatest like uh handwriting oh she had beautiful she used yeah. you know like this special well, type of does, actually, handwriting yeah. for you know taking notes and mm-hmm. and stuff and um so when my mom was helping clean out her house they found stacks and stacks and stacks like literally an entire closet in my grandmother's house of lists and my grandmother would find something that interests her and she would like NASCAR. Like, but yeah, NASCAR, for example, NASCAR, NASCAR, NASCAR is a great there one. There was a whole shelving unit. Yes. Full of notebooks. Yeah. The whole shelving unit, floor and, and ceiling yeah. of notebooks. So, yeah. Full of NASCAR. Definitely lists. inherited. Right. And yes. it's, um, she would take like, she would, watch she would a li- make a, a list of all of the people who drove Ford vehicles. And then she would make a list of all of the people who uh, were on this team. Or you know certain things like that. She would just watch the races, and she would. She would. Oh wow! So she could have been an analyst of some sort. Yes. Okay. That's. I mean, she would. She would say she would break it down by which of the Ford cars broke down um, because of engine failure, and which ones left the race because of a wreck, and which ones left. And she did it for every make and manufacturer of car. Oh wow! That is. I mean, it was the detail. And and then she would correlate that to across the season. So thirty 
32, 36 races. I can't remember how many races there are. Um, or there were like it's, a it's, NASCAR it's, savant. Yeah, you know, that's, yes. that's very interesting because NASCAR is boring you know, to me. She <laughs> can tell you yeah. how many times Jeff Gordon had engine trouble, how many times he had had a flat tire, how right. many, you know, whatever. And um, and she knew all those details because she tracked all of it. See, yeah. I love like listing and tracking like that, but I'm not that dedicated. Like, um. Well, you're not OCD. I mean, I do it cash. Okay, so one thing that I have to do as a teacher is keep student data. Right. So I do, I am very OCD about student data and work data. And Mm -hmm. I do a lot of listing and track. Maybe that's why I don't do it to the extent that y'all do in your personal life. Because my work requires that. I am always well, I, tracking I and do too, to a certain extent because and with my making, you know, stuff. My group cruises, I've actually developed this extensive spreadsheet when I'm working with my group cruises because mm-hmm. I have to track as particularly like my crafting cruises or whatever. Yeah. Because I have to track all of my uh each client's data for each person in that cabin you know all of their personal data birth dates Mm -hmm. um passport information whatever um what kind of cabins they're in and um when i first started this there weren't any good client uh record management options offered to me because so i had to develop my own Mm -hmm. um spreadsheets for this and i had these um very deep multi-level spreadsheets for this and um and it would include things like um did this person sign up for classes and did what size t-shirt did they wear and right. um what yeah. are their payments that they've made and right. you know so it so yeah that's very there's, similar there's, to what i do at work what you're doing. but yeah. I, yes. I don't know my students t-shirt size well yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> so i, I mean, like <laughs> to think about like your list so like if you just have like a long streaming list of something that to me i think that's a one-dimensional list and yeah i think mm-hmm. of spreadsheets as a two-dimensional list because you've got cross-referencing well, they're almost a three-dimensional list because they are up and down left to right and then you, stacked up yeah in, you yeah you can make layers in layers over mm-hmm. different sheets so yeah yeah like a list like my favorite hobbies that is a one-dimensional list mm-hmm. it goes from top to bottom yeah right Mm-hmm. But if you are making a spreadsheet, one page spreadsheet, then that is a list top to bottom that spreads left, left to right. right. Yeah. So that's two dimensions. Yeah. And then if you have multiple sheets where that information stacks up, you know, like over multiple pages, mm-hmm. then that becomes a like three a workbook. Di- yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah. three dimensional list. So like I, I will have a list that talks about the cabins they're in. And then another page will talk about the payments they've made. And another page will talk about the classes they've signed up for. And, you know, and just different things like that. So, and, you know, then there's one for travel protection that they bought. There's another one for the hotel bookings that I made in relation to it. And it, and it, it does. It's just a very extensive list. But it's just a fancy way of making a list is what it mm-hmm. is. So. Yeah. Very oh, yeah. I, uh, I understand. But it is Definitely. it is very similar to keeping grade books and data about your students. Very mm-hmm. very similar. So yeah, we yeah definitely keep like those types of spreadsheets at work, especially when it comes to state testing and oh, yeah. and um, I keep a like list like whenever we benchmark test a list of each student and where their strengths and weaknesses are mm-hmm. and. Um, what um aspect that I need to reteach to them and then another layer of how I'm going to reteach it and when I'm going to reteach it and what way I'm going to teach Mm -hmm. it so it's yeah definitely like layered and then like I keep like a checklist of like things that I need to teach things that I've taught and things that I need to Mm reteach and then a checklist of like resources that I have to do these certain types of teaching, you know, aside from like all of the regular stuff like seating charts, right. grade book stuff, um, great. And then 
grade book, my grade book even goes a little bit farther, like it does grade, like I do grade fluctuations, like uh, this this student went up five points, went down, you know, so oh, yeah. on. yeah, you can track them over time. Yeah, yeah, so on and so forth. And, yeah, I, I do all of that in, like, spreadsheets as mm-hmm. well. So, you know, it's, it's definitely exhausting and takes many hours. Yes. But, you know, I do, like, do, like, the fun listing as well. Like, I have a book of lists of restaurants, a restaurant bucket list. Oh, yeah. And then uh, to go even further, I have a coffee shop bucket list, mm-hmm. especially for my Instagram. Yeah, that goes, because that goes really well. You would have to keep track of where you've been and where you yeah. want to go. Yeah. And then, like, I also have, like, a list of, like, um, places that I've already been that I still need to Instagram about. And content and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. that's yeah. definitely like a, another layer of like different stuff. And then like I go even further on my list. Like after I go to a place, I will write like a mini review in my list. Like don't eat this, don't do that, um, and so on and so forth. So yeah. Yeah. I guess maybe I do kind of list like y'all do also. <laughs> I, well, <laughs> now you know, that I'm even, thinking about it, even, even with modern musings, I mean, we have some extensive lists too. Because oh my we gosh, have, yeah, we do have a lot of lists. we have lists of podcasts that we're going to record, and then we have po- uh, lists of podcasts that we've already recorded, and which ones have been edited, and which ones have been posted, and then which blog and who's the the um, host host on, mm-hmm, or yeah. the the author of each blog and what day it's coming out, and you know, so there's. There's lists. We use lists all the time. I use lists every day in my planner. Um, you know, I, I make a list of all the tasks I need to do that comes directly from my um, Eisenhower matrix, you know. So, um, you know, there there's a lot of different ways that we use lists. I, I want to have more time to do more of the fun lists because, like I said, I I watched that Lael Conkar videos for a long time while she was um, doing stuff. Well, she's still doing it, but I don't have time to watch her as often anymore. But um, I I loved watching her do her lists, and it really inspired me to do the bullet journal lists and to put lists in my COVID journal um, when I kept my COVID journal. And um, that... You know, that was kind of a fun thing to do to make those lists, even during COVID when things were so bleak and it was a fun thing to do to watch her do it. So um, I, I, I'd I like to do more of those kind of lists. So, you know, it's, I don't, I don't always have time, but that's what I'd like to do. I do have a list of, um, I have a bucket list. Like I said, I, we did the. We did a summer list. We did a, or we're, I'm working on my fall bucket list. It's not quite there yet. <laughs> yeah. So I have like my um, holiday and seasons. Like it's like, it's not a binder. It's like a notebook that I'm putting together. Uh, kind of like the home binder, but this one's more about like celebrations and holidays and stuff. Mm-hmm. So um, each month I try to have like, um, some kind of bucket list for the month that kind of goes with the theme of the season. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, so, and, I have and I've a, been I have building a, on that. I have an overall bucket now. list too, like a travel yeah. bucket list. That's yeah. like these are the places I want to go. Right. Um. Someday in my life, you know, and because um, I'm a, I love to travel. That's why I'm a travel agent. So I have all these places I want to go, and so I have them listed out so that I. That's my goal, and. I try to list, I, I like having lists of goals because that gives me something to focus on mm-hmm. and something to work towards. So right. it's, it's a, a way to manifest things. So, yeah. So I wanted to circle back cause, uh, I know I kind of brushed you off when you were like, what's an APN? Oh yes, she did. <laughs> we had yeah. talked about it before. So I knew, I know, but I, I, I'm it, just but... thinking, I, I, I know what an APN is, obviously. So but sorry, I, I didn't circle back to that quick enough. I, <laughs> I put a pin in it in my head. Um, so she I didn't do put have it on the list. a pl- <laughs> like a list. I made a short list. I made a list for yeah. this podcast of places 
to make lists and then we ended up like expanding on that further than I even imagined with like playlists <laughs> and stuff but um I was just listing off like my go-to places for lists because I have them everywhere I'm a clutter brain mm -hmm. so I have uh, obviously my iPhone I use the notes and reminders so uh, I have those two places for lists and then I also had put down APN and that stands for all purpose notebook actually I'd never heard of it called APN until Amber called it that um, <laughs> when we were in college um, you know because we were roommates yeah. in college so we I've known her for like 20, 20 years, years now. yes yeah. 20 years this and year 20 years and we both found that we had a all purpose notebook I just called it my spiral and Amber's was a way cooler term um that <laughs> was where yeah, I was keeping that since junior high yeah. different APNs that was where I first had my first list going and it was like a list I made about things that I loved and it was like you know something you know I think I started it when I was like 18 so you know I have no idea what was in it, but you know, I'm sure I listed that like. That would be an interesting. I know, list right? I got I got at. it in my trunk at home, so <laughs> one day I'll bust it out and look and see if I like those same things anymore. Um, and then I have uh, bullet journals, so that's become my like more permanent. It's so, like APNs, like where you can make scratch notes, but my bullet journal is where I will make a more artistic list. So mm -hmm. the final list goes in the bullet journal. And um, obviously my day planner because you got to put lists in there. Um, oh, bulletin boards. So sometimes it's nice to have a list mm -hmm. on a bulletin board. Uh, Mom was talking about like fridge notes and stuff like that. Um, so uh, like even you could say like your weekly menu Monday through Sunday. Which I have on my refrigerator. You have a list and you put what you're having for dinner. That's your menu. It's a list. And I actually, mine is very creative. I use um, my my fat brush markers from Tombow and I, do, I practice my hand lettering to make my menu list for the week every week. So mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. Yeah. And then I have uh, my home binder, obviously, and then my clipboard of lists. And so that's actually what I'm holding right now. I usually don't use this whenever we're doing our podcasting. I actually use it on uh, Sunday when we do our planning together. Um, but I brought it with me today because I was at mom's and I thought, oh, if, if I need to, I can kind of write in it while I have spare time. And, like, I have my Miracle Morning. I've been recreating my Miracle Morning. Mm. Uh, you know, the six savers. That's where you, like, meditate and read and journal and visualize and such. I started writing down other things that I can do during that Miracle Morning routine. So I have that on my clipboard. Um, this is kind of like, I don't know. I've been using this one. This is like a whole bunch of sheets of paper of lists that just started appearing on my clipboard. Um, and it's like my, it's too. like my planning clipboard. It became like a thing recently. I've, I've only been using it for the past two months Look, now, but see, I have one too. Yep. <laughs> yep. I realized how helpful it was. I could just grab the whole clipboard and take it to the other room with me or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, just kind of like wrapping up the thoughts here. Was there anything else that you guys wanted to circle back to or? I think we have like I I like run the I'm glad list. you came back to what the APN was. Like I said, I I knew what it was, but I thought maybe some of our newer listeners may not have known what an APN was. So, um, and we we tend to get in our little jingo, you know, our lingo, lingo, yeah, whatever our <laughs> jargon. Jingo. Well, yeah, jargon lingo. It's it's yes. funny because like um. To, what is it, two years ago now, like the end of 2020, almost two years ago, up until like, um, I mean, I'd kind of like casually journaled always, and I've always had my APN ever since middle school, I kept an APN, and I keep them like in order on my shelf of like which one I started oh, yeah. with, they're mm -hmm. all numbered and everything like that, and so, you know, I keep stuff like poetry, lists recipes everything like that and then Kristen comes up to me and she's like I want to get you into creative journaling and that's <laughs> when I got my first Bujo bullet journal and I started making a list journal and then 
Kristen like dragged me down the rabbit hole even further and got me into happy planning and got me into like a really like um power sheet goal yeah setting. power sheet goal setting which is more and, lists <laughs> yeah uh-huh. more more lists and so now I have a million journals just like Kristen <laughs> and Cindy do you can't and, just have one no, yeah they're, and they're, yeah so I mean I've always had an art journal. You know, so that was one that I've always had. And, you know, I've had like um like a, a different kind of list journal, I guess, just like in a spiral notebook. But now I'm making a creative one just like Kristen is. So, yeah, I definitely think a lot of like a, everything just kind of comes together and goes back to, to each other pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I... It's uh sometimes I get inspired whenever we start talking about lists making. I'm like, ooh, I got to make a list of lists that I want to make. <laughs> and then I'm like, I'm a sick person <laughs> because I'm like, I'm so excited about making lists. I don't know what it is. It's just so calming to me. Like some people it like is. to, you know, go play I tennis. I like the to, making of run. lists more than I, I like doing the I think that's what it stuff. is. Like some people like to go run to get the thoughts out of their head. I like to sit down and write lists. Like yeah. I feel so calm and grounded yes um so I did want to bring it back around to like you know how it can benefit you like spiritually emotionally in your health in whatever ways um you know just sit down and write a list just find something to write a list of and you know get those thoughts off of your head something bothering you write a list of things that are bothering you. pros and cons Mm -hmm. or um these are the things I need to work through. This is what I don't like. This is what I do like. This is things that I'm interested in right now. Right. Sometimes that has actually happened to me multiple times where I just felt so bleh or meh. Like I was uninterested in anything. And I was just like, I know I have interests and I have hobbies and things that I love. Let me just write them down so that I can remember them. Right. And just the act of writing them down inspired me. And I went, ooh, I want to do something, you know, like, Oh, I haven't, right. you know, Bible journaled in a long time or something right, like that yeah. because I it was something that I loved or inspired me before. So I put it on the list and, you know, it comes back to you. You're like, oh, yeah, I do love that. I remember that, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, you know, the the I, I'm, I'm thinking back to the um, the end of the year last year. Um, we were we were all sitting here at Christmas and um, I think you were trying to teach. um Travis how to kind of work through his goal setting mm-hmm. stuff for his power sheets and my son Stephen uh, was also having a little bit of a challenge um, getting some motivation and some things like that so we uh, we did an exercise and it's it's kind of a group listing oh uh, yes kind of, it's it's sort of like um uh it's kind of like what Lael does. Her, hers is more fluff because she did, you know, my favorite smells or my favorite um, game shows or whatever. But what we did was each person would ask a question um, like, I need to know ways to get motivated to get up and do things every day. And so then we would set a timer and we would all just list off as many things we as we could think notes. of. Yeah, we it, did it on we, sticky we notes. We each got our own sticky note pad and you just wrote it on a sticky note, peeled it off and slammed yes. it in the middle and of the table. A, and it's, it's a actu- race to get as it's, many thoughts. It's actually a great um, practice in intuition mm-hmm. as well as building your intuition, um, which was how Kristen and I learned this technique. But it's great for listing or for any kind of insight or planning or goal setting or whatever because you're getting other people to give you ideas uh-huh. and then um and we just listed these things off list 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 and then you compile all the sticky notes into a list and then you can have an action plan oh and the it's nice on sticky notes too because you can move them move around them around and put them categories. in whatever or category or mm-hmm. order that you want to put them in or whatever um and and that was so much fun i i love doing that so just to kind of like um, go deeper into that. Your question was fun things we can do as a family. Yes. And we were all sitting at the table writing out the th- things that we wanted to do together 
for fun. Yes. And you had this long list of like 50 things. Yes. And, and then what we did was we took them and did what is like short term. Short term, long term. Yeah. Um, reasonable. You know, we could do that this year. We might need more than five years. Or, you know, I divided them out into all these mm-hmm. categories. And, and we came up with a lot of different things um, for our family to do as fun activities every month or whatever. Yeah. And, um, and it was, it, it's turned out really awesome. Now, some of the things we put on the list and we kind of later said, oh, I'm kind of tired of doing stuff right now. Can we just put that one on hold for a while? But at least we have these options and now we have this long list of things mm-hmm. uh, just like my go-to list of meals. Now we have a go-to list of fun family, of fun activities. family activities for like the extended family. So, um, you know, Hey, let's go throw axes at the ax yard, you know, or whatever. So, um, and we did a lot of the things and had so much fun. Mm-hmm. So I've, uh, I've really enjoyed that list and uh i think Raina, we we did this as a mm-hmm. whole family we each actually. got to put in our own question so Raina's was how can i get straight a's and so then everybody gave her input of things that she mm-hmm. could do to get good grades and she actually got St- pretty much straight, pretty a's, much straight yeah. a's this year so mm-hmm. um which was a good thing you know she she had struggled a little bit mm-hmm. especially during covid as a lot of children did but um she wanted good grades and we gave her some stuff and you know i think that i i i don't know it was a it was a fun bonding activity for all of us to make those lists Mm -hmm. and then also it was really just helpful to all of us to make those lists so um it's kind of cool yeah i encourage that and you can do that by yourself too i've seen a lot of people oh yes you can do that sticky note method that's the brain dump instead of just typing it or writing it putting them on sticky notes um, because then you can use like a poster board or a blank the wall, wall or the, door or the or back of your like door that. or something and move them into different categories. Mm-hmm. Kind of see like, okay, these are home Ooh. and this is work you related. You know what? I just, I just had one of those thoughts. We did that matters. in Girl Scouts. Um, I was a Girl Scout leader for Christmas Girl Scout troop. And I remember one year for our annual planning at, in the summer to get ready for the new school year. We took um, poster board or whatever and made these big calendars, uh, you know, seven days by four four weeks, you know, one for each month and posted them around the room. And then all of the girls just wrote on sticky notes as many things as they could think of that they wanted to do. And then we went through and put them on the calendar. Do you remember that? Yeah. And that was a really great way. To make that list, it was a, a visual a way to make yeah. the list, and um, and to plan and to, and very engaging for everyone, and then um, and then we just took the took those sticky notes and put them on the dates where we, and because they were on sticky notes, if we wound up having to move something, it was really easy instead of writing on a piece of paper and then scratching Erasing it out or whatever. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We just put them on those sticky notes yeah, and put I them like on those the big squares notes. on those calendars that we made. And, um, and that was really fun. That was really cool. I do yeah. that in my classroom a lot. Yeah. Like, yeah. uh, put anchor chart on the, that's what and it's then, called. Anchor, anchor chart. chart. Yeah. Put, yes. put an anchor chart on the wall and the kids write on sticky notes, uh, a list of things that have to do with what we're talking about. Oh yeah. Yeah. Word lists. Yes. Yes. I have a lot. I have lots of word lists in my classroom. Mm-hmm. I love, I love lists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love lists. So we would love to hear your thoughts on list making, or do you just think that was the dumbest topic in the world? Let us know. <laughs> or we just totally, uh, what's called a glazomaniac, which is someone who's obsessed with making lists. A what? Glazomaniac. G-L-A-Z-O-M-A-N-I-A-C. Spell that again really slow. G like George, L, A, Z for zebra, O, M for Mary. A N for Nancy I A C. Glazomania. Yes, that is someone who uh, is obsessed with making lists. It is not considered like uh, something that's used academically or clinically, but it is a term. Glazomania. So, 
Interesting. Yes, and it is a category of OCD. Oh, Um, it's the organizational and structure and symmetry part of. Oh, that makes a lot. That makes a lot. It does. It does. I was like, I know that this list making obsession is obviously it's obsession. Um, (laughs) So, uh, but yeah, everyone can enjoy making lists, and some people might be a little bit more obsessed with it than others. But mine is healthy. It's not in any way like destructive to my health. So I don't think it. I don't think. So either mine the... actually helps me function a little exactly. Bit more, yeah, so it does. It's so. it's actually mine is more like an ADD coping mechanism. It, it might make me a little slower to get things done, but it actually helps me remember to get things done. Right. So, yeah. so that's Whoa. actually part of glossomania is um, sometimes making that list, being obsessed with making the list for fear that you might forget. Oh, um, so one of them hmm. is making a list of morning routines, like brushing your teeth and brushing your oh, hair. Yes. And I've actually had that. I've done that my yes. whole life. I've always had a list. I keep it hidden somewhere ADHD, where other people can't see that's it. That's an ADHD <laughs> thing, though. That's an ADHD coping mechanism yeah. that we were taught. I used to kids. have so. it posted on my mirror in my bathroom. And as an adult, I had someone come over and they pointed it out and I took it down because I was like, wow, that's kind of odd. Most people probably don't have like a list of their morning routine posted on the mirror because most people go, how do you need to be reminded to brush your teeth? But, you know, some when... people, I mean, no, some people forget. And, uh, well, I mean, you it's know, not it's really about like forgetting. A, it's just it's, about the prioritizing. You get distracted by other things. Yeah. And you, you, well, uh, if we things happen in the wrong order, you had don't a past think. podcast about brushing your teeth or right? taking <laughs> a shower. So, right. Yeah. So, but, I used to have like something like that posted in my house also like not when we lived together but like later one. on like a to-do list and mm-hmm. I have and, one on in my bujo so and it lays open on my desk every morning so that I mean it's not the brush your mm-hmm. teeth and stuff but it's my morning routine take my pills take my blood sugar do this mm-hmm. do that. I, I because, need to do that yeah. more cuz I'm like really bad at putting stuff in my journal or whatever and not looking at it ever again Mm -hmm. i leave mine open my lists are always open on my desk so yeah yep well uh, like i said i would love to hear uh your thoughts on um list making uh do you have any obscure lists that you would like to share we'd love to hear about it to hear about that Uh, you know comment on the um modern musings chat our facebook chat group mmc chat um you can also hit us up on our blog in the comments we would love to have comments on our blogs because we do pour a lot of effort into the blogs um you will see that if you're only listening to the podcast you are missing out on a big portion of the conversation because about uh, what three-fourths of our conversation is actually the blog yeah so, so yeah we podcast is just part of the, the content blog. yeah mm-hmm. and um so definitely come check us out where we take a deeper dive on our blog into our lists mm-hmm. and other uh parts of our conversations for each week we have three uh blogs that correlate with the conversation mm-hmm. and unless one of us just has a wild hair and does something completely different Which but typically typically we, yes <laughs> typically they're all related in their own ways our own take very, some often mm-hmm. very different which is the maiden mother crone take yeah. perspective on life so yeah yeah so check us out and uh, we do want to thank Red Door Studios and Creative Audio Tech for the equipment and sound. Mm -hmm. And um, what are we talking about next week? Let's talk about that. Well, we are in October, which, uh, as a lot of you know, is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And as a breast cancer survivor, I feel like the awareness is important. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about breast cancer for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. All okay, right. yeah. Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you guys again for listening. We do appreciate it. Without you listeners, we would just be like Talking the tree falling in the yes, woods. Does definitely. anyone hear it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, and we'll catch you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.